Yo, 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 what up? Welcome to another episode of You're Gonna Be Okay. I'm the host, Tony D. Mac. As always, I got a special guest in the building. Give it up for my boy, Baroon G. There's What's the, up? There's no clap. There's no clap. There's no, there's no. Make it clap. <laughs> But That's where we started. We gotta make it clap. Hey, hey, make it. We gotta start somewhere. What's oh, up, Bruce? How are you? Not much. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate you for coming. Yeah, Oceanside. You. Yeah, where'd you drive from? I was all over the place. I was yeah. in uh, Newport Beach. I, yeah. Newport Beach today? Yeah, yeah. I had to pick up some equipment from over there. So. You're traveling too? You're doing a lot? You're just, uh, you're just in Seattle, right? Yeah, I'm actually yeah. flying out tomorrow morning. To Seattle? Yeah. You in a uh, competition? Stand-up? I am doing, I'm doing this. Seattle. Seattle. Okay, tell me yeah. about this. Tell me about this, <laughs> this, this comedy competition that you're in. So uh, it's, it's called the Seattle International Comedy Competition. Word. Uh, yeah, if you're smart, you figured out it's in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, it's been going on for like 40 years. Damn. Uh, past winners include uh, uh, Mitch Hedberg. Mm-hmm. Um, Mitch Hedberg is the biggest one. Uh, Zoltan. Zoltan was from here. Yeah, Zoltan's from here. Yeah. Yeah, Zoltan's he from won here. it. He, he won. won. Yeah. Shit. Uh, Zoltan, Mitch, and a few other names. Uh, it's one of those that, you know, it's mm-hmm. it can open some doors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's that one for the comedians listening. There's the Seattle International Comedy Competition. Mm-hmm. And the same people run the uh, San Francisco Comedy okay. Competition. So, so w- what place are you in right now? Right now, we're going back for semifinals. Okay. So it's three stages. That's the frustrating part. It takes yeah. up the entire month. Yeah. So I was in week one. That was the first bracket. Yeah. Week two, the second bracket just ended like yesterday. Okay. And I'm going back for like the semifinals. And then if you advance, there's the finals okay. in the last week of November. <laughs> My man Baruji out there <laughs> moving around, moving around. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, that's what I've been up to. Mm-hmm. So Burundi, all right. I've, I've, when did we we met? Like uh, probably like a couple months back. Months back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I th- where, where, what mic was it? One of the mics. You were on the scene. You were doing yeah. your thing, and like as like Burundi, you never hear a name like that. You never, <laughs> you never hear like. First off, people need to know where yeah. where are you from? Like I am from uh, Uganda. I mean, Uganda. Uganda. Yeah, Ugandan comedian, but I've been in the states for maybe the last fifteen years or so. Okay. Yeah, I came here for college many years ago, and then I, you know, got so how, so. Up. How did your Ugandan parents was like? You know what? I'm giving up college. I'm tracing stand up comedy. <laughs> I'm doing comedy now. Yeah, it's one of those things. I know. <laughs> 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 They'll never get it. Yeah. Hey, okay. hey, yeah. Oh shit! It's in uh... testing, testing. You keep talking. About yeah, um, they will never get it. Uh, it's something that you know. I have to just just go through the emotions, and then hopefully one day they will get it. Um, but I think in any family, there has to be that one person who starts doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other people follow the lead. Um, case in point, I'm actually the first one in my family to move to the U.S., so there we go. I've done my part. <laughs> so you're the first person to move to the U.S. from yeah, I had Uganda? F- no, no, in my family. To move to the U.S.? Yeah. Uh, I've had family move to, like, um, other countries. My dad lived in Japan for a bit mm-hmm. when, I was ki- when, when I was a kid. Um, I've had family members move to Europe, yeah. the UK, but never the US. So I'm the first one who's like. So really what? What made you want to come to the US for for college, right? But like. Yeah, uh, that's a long story, yeah. but I'll make it short. Long story short. <laughs> long story short. Um, I came here on scholarship. Okay. Yeah. So soccer, I'm assuming. No. Okay. That was, no. That was I was trying to guess, but <laughs> <laughs> marathons. Marathons? <for> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish marathon. No. You came here on scholarship. What scholarship? Academic scholarship. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was an academic scholarship. That's tight. It was very coincidental. Mm. Um, I've I've told this story. I I try to tell it whenever yeah. I can, but it's like, um, high school over there, going into college or university as we call it mm-hmm. over there, is very competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you graduate high school, you enter a pool, mm-hmm. the entire country. Yeah. Um, you enter a pool, and out of like, let's say half a million kids, what? you're fighting for like, 
five five hundred thousand spots. <laughs> All right, so the entire the entire country. Yeah. The entire country gets together. You say, you know what? After mm-hmm. high school. Yeah. They pull you enter a pool. That sounds like divergent or something. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it is. It is pretty rough. It, here's what happened in my yeah. case. I didn't make it. What? Yeah, all the universities over there, I got rejected by what? all of them. Yeah. So I was, I was gonna be pushing trucks, you yeah. know, like on pushing the trucks. Yeah, I got. I was gonna do hard labor. What? Because because well, if you don't get, because at that point I'm a high school graduate. Yeah. yeah. In an African country. Yeah. It's like the the ceiling immediately drops because the, the the type of jobs you're gonna do, mm. all the you're not gonna leave the country. No, nothing good is gonna happen for you. So if you didn't, so if you didn't take <clears throat> get the scholarship, you would be in Uganda. Can I swear on this podcast? I'm f- I was fucked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like fuck. real yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. What what I, I have a lot of questions. Like, I know that's why I what, said it's a long story. What's the biggest yeah. like when you first when you first got to America? Yeah. What was the biggest like? What was the what was the barrier? Like, what did you have to do? Everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything was new. Uh, I was uh, sixteen going to seventeen at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never been out of the country. Okay. It's a new experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. First first uh, first time I own a passport. First time I leave the country, yeah. let alone coming to the U.S. That's crazy. Leave the country. That's crazy. Um, first time I had lived away from my parents mm-hmm. within the country, but like for real, for real, like Not you're yet. on your own. Yeah. This was the you first gotta talk time. To what's that? What's up? <laughs> yeah. So everything was new. Yeah. Everything was new. Um, I, the weather, I couldn't handle it. And the food, I couldn't handle it. Where, where'd you go? Where, what place did you go first? I went straight to Seattle. Okay, straight to Seattle. That's yeah. where you, like you got all your roots in. That's where I okay. started. Yeah, and uh, I went to uh, Seattle University, which okay. is a small liberal arts uh, university. What did you study there? <laughs> not comedy. Not, yeah, not, <laughs> not comedy, of course. Your uh, parents I, would not send you out the country if you're studying comedy. It's like yeah. you're not going anywhere. No, I went to the business school. Okay. Yeah, I went to the business school. Uh, graduated, thankfully. So okay. I have my degree. So okay. I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I just realized we'll put that in the back. <laughs> it's What's fine, that? though. Um, with camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, that's fine. We, yeah, we brought, yeah, we put it on. Yeah, yeah. we could have put it right there. Yeah. So that's what happened. Mm-hmm. That's actually tight. Yeah. yeah. I need that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I started off in, in, in Seattle, and mm-hmm. basically the first, like, I'd say five years mm-hmm. was just, like, relearning shit. Mm-hmm. Like, everything. I learned how to eat American food. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sandwiches? Yeah. I didn't grow up eating sandwiches. Sandwiches are fire, dog. They are, but yeah. when you're coming from a different culture, the idea of, like, bread and meat... Mm-hmm together the yeah. texture and everything no they don't what we eat bread separately separate we eat from, meat separately okay but never together so when you were shocked people were just like meat and sandwiches together and you're just like <laughs> what, what what is going on <laughs> <laughs> you guys did yeah. that weird shit you know you're like three meals a day i'm yeah. like what no nah, you got it got it good over here fam. yeah, yeah got uh, my favorite at the time though the easiest food for me was uh Asian food, okay. Indian, Asian, anything like Love that. Love Indian food. It's my favorite cuisine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although teriyaki, I don't eat it no more. Teriyaki chicken? But back in the day, that was my thing. Okay. Because it, it culturally, it mm. was it's rice, mm. meat, mm. and whatever else is on it. Yeah. I conceptually, that was so like. What's your What's your favorite yeah. American food? <laughs> <Like> your, <laughs> favorite, your favorite American, American food. Oh, that's you give me, you give me three three things that you like. All right. If you would go back to your country and be like, yeah. look, y'all got to go try. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, it'll, number one, definitely be Mexican food, okay. particularly burritos. Okay. Because uh, we have a version of that. Okay. Ours is called the, the Rolex. Rolex? It's famous. You look it up online. So, so if I go to Uganda, like, <laughs> yeah. yo, I need a Rolex. So like, not the watch. Not, not the, the watch. <laughs> <laughs> But the concept of the Rolex is... Yo, good. imagine... Oh, this is just a <laughs> imagine, like, a Ugandan person listening to somebody got the Rolex on my arm, like a rapper. He was like, so he has a burrito? <laughs> it's like, arm, arm. <laughs> You're going to eat that watch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but the Rolex is basically eggs. Yeah. Uh, usually eggs, and you mix it up with uh, some veggies. So it's like hard. onions. Uh, they put cabbage usually. It's tight. Uh, you can put uh, green or red peppers, uh, and then um, you toast that up to fry it, and yeah. then you get a tortilla-shaped kind of bread. Yeah. And you put the egg inside, and then you roll it like a burrito. What? That sounds yeah. good. And they sell it on the streets. Uh, it's a, like, it, granted, you know, uh, depending on how dusty the streets are, oh it could mess goodness. you up. <laughs> but the the, the, the the thing itself, you can make it yourself too. I need some. I'm not, I want to try you guys. I want to, <laughs> like I'm, I'm open to experiencing many different food cuisines as possible. So yeah. Ugandan is on. So they're famous for the Rolex. What else? Is- uh, we got the Rolex, and then uh, we grow a lot of plantains. Okay. I, yeah, like, I just got into the plantain game. So oh I yeah, just, yeah. Like, so if you drive on this, uh, it, not I was gonna say streets, no, but like extensively, yeah, it's all at least where I come from, hmm. but most directions, regardless of what direction you drive, yeah. it'll be like six hours of just plantains, plantains, That's plantains. That's crazy. Plantains. Yeah, so we grow a shit ton of plantains. Okay. And you can do whatever you want with plantains. You could... Uh, I have some plantain pancakes. Oh, yeah, you yeah. could make pancakes, you could uh, mush them up and have them with stew. Yeah. Ooh. You could uh, fry them. African people are big on stew. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they get things so big on stew, man. <laughs> no, because we have a lot of starches. Yeah. So, like, a lot of the starches obviously don't have taste. Mm-hmm. Rice, no taste. Yeah. Plantains, no taste. Yeah. Um, uh, corn, yeah. no taste. Yeah. So, the stew is, is the thing that brings the party home. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise you're just chewing cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about, so, you traveled here yeah. to America, and mm-hmm. then you finished your degree. Yeah. So, were you doing comedy before you finished the degree, or was it after you, when did you start doing comedy? Uh, I started in 2015. 2015, that's after you got your degree? Yes. Okay, so yes. what... What's the transition? Did you like get a job in like the the business field, and then so how did you get into comedy? Like, we're first open mic, first place doing comedy. First place doing comedy. Again, long story, but I'll make it short. Long story short. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of this podcast. Episode, yeah. Long story short. <laughs> but um, when I graduated, uh, so I, I think I graduated. Oh, man, I'm dating myself right here. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about yeah. that. It's 20, 20, 2015. Yeah. A friend of mine invited me to a retirement party. Okay. Uh, and I was like, oh, bet. I'll show up. And then um, I show up to the retirement party all dressed up. Yeah. Um, and then they were like, oh, it's a dog retirement party. Mm. This dog was retiring. Like an actual animal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, White so, people? <laughs> okay. no, just, you just, guessed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You guessed it. So it was a dog retirement party. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had like the dog federation or union, whatever yeah. you call them. So it was a bunch of old people with yeah. their dogs yeah. and food and a few speeches. And then at the end of the all that, yeah. they were like, we have some entertainment. Yeah. We have two comedians here. Yeah. And it was two guys. Um that went up and entertained. Mm. One of them was American. Mm. Um, the other one was from South Africa. They mm. flew him in for a dog retirement party that's, to do comedy. That's insane. It is insane. That's insane. And then, obviously, as you know, mm. those are not ideal conditions for a comedy at show. All. So both of them died horribly yeah. at a dog retirement party. Hey. And I saw that, and I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> that means that you're sick in the head. That's, that's what that means. That means you are sick human, <laughs> sick human being. <laughs> I, that's the, that's yeah. the weird part about it. It's like it was painful. Yeah. But it was a part of me, especially given the context of those two guys. Yeah. Because one was American, so he's from here. Yeah. He lives here. Uh, I live here now yeah. at that point. This one doesn't live here, mm-hmm. but he's here for this show. Yeah. But he's coming from where I came from. Yeah. I'm like, these two. This is me. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I'm at this point. I'm I'm half and half. Yeah. Like I grew up over there, but I'm over here. Mm-hmm. And then uh, now I live here, and I feel like I belong here, maybe a mm-hmm. little bit. So I was like, I man, if that dude can fly in, yeah, and do what he did, 
try to build rapport with strangers across mm-hmm. continents. That's that's insane. It is insane. Yeah. Um, and then the other guy too. So I went up to the the, the American comedian mm-hmm. after, and I asked him. I was like, "Yo, uh, good shit." Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, you killed it, it, man. It was rough out there. <laughs> it was rough out there, fam. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I talked to him and I asked him. I was like, you know, if someone wanted to try this, mm-hmm. where, where, how does this work? And yeah, he's yeah. like, oh yeah, you got an open mic and you get on stage and you know, and literally, so where the place he was telling me the mic, he told me was like. Less than, less than 10 minutes away yeah. from where we were, okay. walking distance. Okay. Next week I went. Oh, shit. Mm. And I didn't look back after oh, that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Did yeah. You, I, I, I like to ask people for comedians, <laughs> did you bomb your first time? Did I bomb my first time? Um, I would say no. Okay. I would say no. He's, he's, uh, he works differently for different people. Mm. But generally speaking, I think how it works is you get one. Yeah. You get one good one. Yeah. It's the one after that one. Yeah. The, the next two or three. Mm-hmm. So first one, I think I did okay because of the energy and nerves and everything. Yeah. But then after that, it was like... <laughs> Ooh, like that bombing's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't do... You know, some people do classes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Classes are nice because, one, you get to ease into it with mm-hmm. your classmates and stuff. And then you have the graduation show, yeah, which people come, yeah, you know. So it's as, it's like you start off like this, mm. and then you crescendo, yeah, yeah, and then you go into reality, yeah. yeah. Uh, when you come in the way I came in, yeah. it, it is none of that. <laughs> so it's it's like learning. You had to learn how to like relate to people being from Uganda mm-hmm. in like in a different format, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing, though, is one of the reasons I was drawn to this is because I, throughout high school mm-hmm. and even through college, I did always gravitate towards mm-hmm. anything that involved me being up in front of people. Yeah, yeah. So this for me was just like, oh, okay, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, mm-hmm. but for a different effect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like, I did when I was back in Uganda. I did uh, student government. Mm-hmm. So. But we had that. You guys have assembly here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I used to, I used to take over with assembly. Yeah. Assembly. <laughs> like we, we had teachers that either were not charismatic, mm-hmm. they were not good at it, and and, and I'll be like, I got it. Mm-hmm. Be like, yeah, sure, yeah. go. And then I'll just take up like ten minutes of everyone's time. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was inspirational, funny, whatever. The, the, my fellow students loved it. Mm-hmm. So uh, at that point, I was like, oh, I can do this. Okay. And then that died off. Mm-hmm. Then I come to America. Two years in, I hear about someone talks me into the debate club. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, Fuck, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So I go do that, and then it dies off. So I was always just looking for like, is it, where is it? if mm-hmm. there's a people yeah. listening, yeah, and a big group, and opinions, yeah. <laughs> point of view, yeah, yeah, I'm there. That's fucking awesome, dog. Yeah, that's so, awesome. That's how I got it. What's your What's your like? <laughs> biggest takeaway so far like one thing if like you learned doing comedy what's mm-hmm. one thing that you learned <clears throat> one thing that I learned yeah oh that's a tough one that's a I, first thing I would say is I like to think I'm a student of, of the game mm-hmm. yeah so it, one thing that's tough because you, you learn different things from different people mm-hmm. um, I think the best way I can put it is because you're 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 an international comedian right now. I need I need to schedule a show in Canada. <laughs> then it'll be official. No, that's uh, once you go to Canada, then yeah. yeah, it's like okay, U.S. and Canada, international or oh, Australia. I feel like you can go to Canada. Yeah, yeah, I was I was actually on on the verge of scheduling some stuff over there, but then I moved. Yeah, because uh, Seattle, three hour drive to Vancouver. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, no fruit. Don't bring no fruit. <laughs> Canadians, they're weird. Can't bring no fruit over there. There's a lot of things you cannot bring in, what? including guns. <laughs> well, of course. We're American. Of course. <laughs> Americans and, love our guns. Yeah. Anyway, so things I've learned, I, if there was one thing, mm-hmm. one thing, which is 
a lot of comedians and some audience members think the goal is to say funny things. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. The goal is to explain what's funny to you to other people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why some critiques, again, in includes comedians and the audience and the press. Mm -hmm. They'll say so and so is not funny, so and so, so you know, because mm. you're using your point of view, the way you see the world, mm. as the barometer mm. for funny. Yeah. But what the best comedy that I've seen is, hey, this is what's weird to me. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining it to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, at the end of the day, that's what. If any comedian is doing that, mm. and most of the time it will work, because mm. you're speaking from an authentic place. Yeah. Yeah. You just like. I don't want to burn jokes. But uh, most of the jokes I have, I can trace to a specific incident where mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this happened. Mm -hmm. This is how I felt. Yeah. Um, but nobody wants to hear tragedy. Yeah. So the punchline comes in as a, to relieve. As a filler. Yeah, yeah, yeah as okay. a filler. Oh, you, like, you've heard me joke about uh, drinking age and stuff yeah. like that. I used to go to bars with my friends yeah. who were older and it would just be this weird dance outside the bar. They're like, stay, stay over here. Yeah. They go talk to the bouncer. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if the bouncer was chill and willing to break the law, yeah. then maybe they slide me over this way. It yeah. was just a whole dance. Yeah, yeah. When did you, so you started drinking at a young age? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In my culture, it's pretty open. Yeah. Like so. what age? Any age. Like <laughs> just <laughs> 10 years old, you know, saying shot at Jama? No, uh, not really, but like by 12, it's like in the household, it's like, um, so like in the village where I'm from, mm -hmm. uh, we used to, they did, again, going back to plantains, yeah. there's a certain kind of uh, alcohol that is made from uh, bananas. Yeah. It's the little ones. So not the big. The burrow bananas. Yeah, the little, little yeah. ones. Yeah. So what they do is, you know, they harvest them. They uh, store them, they get ripe, yeah. and then uh, they throw them into like, a boat shaped thing. Mm -hmm. Here's the funny part. I didn't think it was funny at the time. Mm -hmm. They use their feet. It's, mm -hmm. You put the bananas in a boat shaped thing, yeah. it, and then you stomp them. Yeah. <laughs> With your bare feet. <laughs> so we just eat, but we eat. Okay. Right. So you stomp them, All right. and then they mix it up with a, a few other, like, Yeasts, mm -hmm. I would say. I see people do that with like wine. Do they have like yeah. the food? They, they stuff, it's it's stuff. kind of like that process. Okay. And then they cover it, dig a hole like six feet under, drop it in there, cover it, let it sit for a couple of weeks or. That's crazy. You know, then they dig it back up. Yeah. That will fuck you up. <laughs> so as kids, when they would dig that up, yeah. they they pass around samples. Yeah. You open. You you're more than welcome to participate. What? Yeah, but that the, when they dig it out of the ground, it is pure. Yeah, it is strong. So you're just getting pure trash. Like, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, so th they have to take that and pour water and other st stuff to make it commercially. Yeah, um, you know, that sounds cozy. like uh, moonshine. That's what it sounds like. It is. Okay. It's very s close to that. Yeah. So as a kid growing up, it's like they'll pass that around. We drink it, and no problem. That's cr so they they. You you said village, so you lived in like like <coughs> think of village in my head. What did you <laughs> village? <laughs> village in my head. Yeah. Of like okay, like describe to me like the village that yeah. you like lived at. One second. Yeah. Um. Yeah, village. Think about my village. So the best way I can explain this mm -hmm. is a lot of people have, you know how rich people here have like multiple homes. Mm -hmm. Uh, one maybe in the city and then one in the in the woods. I yeah. don't know what they the do. Burbs here. The burbs, the yeah. burbs, something. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I we were not that level, mm -hmm. but it's very common for people over there to have one home in the city because mm -hmm. that's where all the money is. Mm -hmm. That's where all the jobs are. Mm -hmm. And then they have like a countryside home, mm -hmm. which is if the city fails, mm -hmm. that's where you go. Okay. Yeah. Or if you're in the village, you're ambitious. So it's, it's like actual, like, village in my head. Teepees, fucking huts oh, yeah. and shit. Oh, yeah. It is. It's That's got all that. It's got all that. <laughs> it's got all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, 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 there's no electricity. That's wild. 
Yeah, there's no electricity. We had to, uh, uh, you fetch the water from like a, a, a borehole and then you, so. you carry it up the hill. Uh, if you want a hot shower, you gotta carry the water, put it on the stove, boil it, throw it in a, in a ba- uh, uh, basin is what it's called. And it makes a shower though? What's that? It makes a shower? Or, or you, you, mean? Like, you, you take shower or you take baths? Uh, you take a sh- uh, wait. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers your the, question. The, the, shower, the, the shower is the one where the water trickles down on you. No, ground. you use your hands. You use your hands. You put it in a, a thing on the ground, and then you 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 use your hands. You should, you lather yourself up. And then you, 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 you like so. Did, was this just like strange to you when you like came here and like? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, so that's the thing. Now it's like with all these different places that I would live. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in a in, the, in your home in the city, mm-hmm. some of the houses have those amenities. Okay, but once you go to the countryside, mm-hmm. you're back to yeah. Okay, old school. So if, even if the the country fails, you'll still you'll still survive. You're like, you know what? This is my home. I know what's going on. Like, we need to build huts. Yeah, <laughs> like, so that was the one thing that uh, my parents. <laughs> That's one thing African parents do a lot. Yeah, is if you misbehave, mm-hmm. they will threaten and or actually do it. Mm-hmm. They they'll deport you to the village. Yes. What? Yeah. So if you're like in the city mm-hmm. and you're acting up, they'll they'll send you back to the village. And the reason they threaten you with that is because of everything I just explained to you. Mm-hmm. It's like you're going from like comfortable showers, mm-hmm. com- indoor toilet, yeah, to Outdoor showers, yeah. Outdoor toilet, no electricity, no TV. That's crazy. That's our concept of getting grounded. Like, <laughs> I so I, I had a small, like went, lived in Virginia for a little bit, mm-hmm. and so my grandmother, she's from like the countryside of Virginia. Ooh, like, yeah. It's different from like the city side. Like, so I get it. So mm-hmm. when we went there. City shuts down at nine o'clock, and I'm talking about I ain't never seen pitch black until I, their city shuts down exactly <laughs> at nine o'clock, and it's pitch black outside. It is black, black. Yeah. So I, I drove out there. And my grandmother was like, "Well, the people I was with, was like, how much gas you got?" I was, you know, I had like a quarter tank. Like, you're, like, you're not gonna make it, fam. You over here staying overnight. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? She's like, uh, the closest gas station is seventy miles out. That's open. Damn. Seven, like, yeah. that's open 70 miles out. That's how deep in the country we were. Like, yeah. like I'm talking about it was nothing but grass and leaves. I seen animals I ain't never seen before, <laughs> man. I'm like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. I, that's, 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 oh, that's, I, that's where we from. I was like, I ain't, I'll never want to go back, fam. I don't ever want to go back. <laughs> Gra- yeah. you, can, you can visit grandma on Zoom. No, fam. Like, I can't. I can't do it. That's like... So, so because people have this weird perspective <coughs> of like African like culture, yeah, like because we only see like in America we only see what we see on TV and like what they show us. Is it yeah. really like that? Is it really like the dirt roads and you know the starving children and stuff like that? That's what that's what America has like shown us. Like, yeah, we just now started seeing like Africa, African countries doing really well on social yeah. media. No, here's the problem with all that stuff is that stuff exists here, too. Yeah. It's just a question of someone taking uh, the extremes of either side. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, which actually, in, in the end, hurts the majority. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give an example. If you watch America in the movies, mm-hmm. uh, I, I always used to joke with Americans, I'm like, the, the only cities I know are the ones in the movies. Right. So, you know, Vegas. Uh, New York, LA, LA, uh, like I, even like cities like Seattle, we never, mm-hmm. until I, I was supposed to come to Seattle, mm-hmm. I didn't know about Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the, the Dakotas, all those other little ones, Sioux I Falls, don't, I don't even know them now. Like, those ones we do not know. We yeah. just know the stuff in the movies. Mm-hmm. But then when you come here, you've been to all these cities. Mm-hmm. Downtown LA is not the same as uptown LA. No, not at all. It's very different. And yeah. then if you go like where the the vacation houses are, it's far different from downtown LA. Yeah, yeah. So like there's all these things. Mm-hmm. So same with Africa. It's like if you go downtown, mm-hmm. uh, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Packed traffic, no r- rules, nothing, chaos. Yeah. 
And then if you go to the rich neighborhoods in there, you can go to them. Yeah. You go to those ones, quiet, clean, mm -hmm. electricity. Yeah. It's nice and serene, security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you go to the countryside, yeah. that's when the nature come out. Okay. So there's all these different parts. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, um, part of it is the media, the, the focus so much on either you hear about the wealthy warlord yeah. who's living large, yeah. has everything, mm -hmm. Or the extremely like poor dying kid, yeah. And most people are in the middle. Mm -hmm. Most people are in the middle. So That's the same with America. Like most people are <laughs> in the middle. Like yeah. But I just don't like how they like they just only show us one part of it. Yeah. 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 And, and again, I uh, part of it is our fault. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. It's because it's like people tell you a story. At some point, that that's the beauty of social media now. Mm -hmm. Because you have all these social media influencers who are going there and painting a different picture. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there has to be a balance. Because mm -hmm. now you're seeing an overcorrection, mm -hmm. at least in, on social media. Yeah. Like you see those uh, beautiful waterfalls in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, like just the you know, great food. And all those things exist. But again, depends where you are. Yeah. Yeah, you can get it all. Mm -hmm. You want the rough rugged you can get it you want the instagram shot you can get it <laughs> but like life is real yeah and there's no yeah everything exists it just yeah. depends what you're looking for and we'll have to take a trip to uganda man we have to really <laughs> we have to take a trip i want to i want to i've never been to africa so i, wanna, I was about to ask have you i've never <clears throat> been um mm -hmm. the places that i want to go is uh i want to go to kenya and i want to go to ghana Kenya, Ghana. Yeah. First, uh, first stops. And you got it now if I had it. Like, that would be my third. Kenya is dope. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're neighbors with Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya's bigger. Mm -hmm. um, it has a little bit more going on uh, tourism-wise. But also just um, it has a coast. Uganda yeah. doesn't have a coast. We're landlocked. Um, Ghana is a big destination. Mm -hmm. Ghana, Ghana's been ahead of the game for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, if someone says they want to go there, I, I see it. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I, f I feel like something there, like, yeah. maybe it's like a, I don't know, I haven't done my ancestral. I was about I to ask, you done ain't done it? <laughs> like, I just feel like it's weird, like, like, I have to figure out, like, y'all stole me from wherever y'all stole me from, <laughs> then y'all gonna, you want me to do a 23 and me, I don't know where y'all selling my information from, so, uh, but I just I'm going to perspective like the people that I meet throughout life yeah like that tell me about you know I have a lot of friends from uh, from Ghana yeah so I would hang out with them and talk to them they would tell me about oh you should go to Ghana and yeah then I met somebody from Kenya yeah and we still like they went back to Kenya we yeah. still talk from time to time on the WhatsApp app like download WhatsApp like bitch I'm not downloading that <laughs> like, but like yeah homegirl would send me pictures from like Kenya and like she lived on like a farm with like animals and shit like nice. mama, like she would send me like plates of the food to eat like goat yeah oh goat is my favorite that's your favorite yeah, it's, yeah especially when they um they bake it in a clay oven a clay oven yeah you said you you hit the clay oven <laughs> <laughs> no it is we just ain't games bro these saying games no, it's legit. I'm telling you. Okay. Oh, so. If you have a chance to okay, so get we that want goat, yeah, and a clay oven. Yeah, it's it's like a, there's a way they build it, and bro, they they, they 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 I don't know what they do, but man, and they serve it with um, vegetables, avocados, and, like, and um, cabbage, and, and a few other spices. It's fire. I feel like like culturally like. A lot of the countries there have like a same similar style like cuisine food. Like yeah, curry goat is like a thing that a lot of people eat. Like goat is like a thing that a, I see a lot of Africans eat. Yeah, yeah. So it's baked goat. That's, that's that sounds that sounds that's dope. I do, I've had had curry goat before. That's really good. So. Curry goat, curry goat is good too. Um, yeah, just to give you context. So um, back in the day, you had. Um, Indians, yeah, who uh, moved to build the railways, yeah, in uh, in East Africa, mm -hmm. Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and so over time they stayed, and that's where the culture exchange happened. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of the cuisines are like that. Yeah, we have a lot of curries yeah. or stews, 
Indian food is my, my favorite cuisine. All, yeah, all okay, we, we right. stole it from them. They, I think, I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think the dashiki came from there, too. Oh. <laughs> 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 Don't you see it? Like when you look at like some of the in, Indian designs, yeah, and I then just you look at the dish. <laughs> <laughs> we was like, "Give me that shirt, no, bro." Shit, that shit is so funny. So you, you said, "Don't like we're not coin." So you said the the shiki came from Indian culture. Yeah, the same. Pattern. We we exchanged. Uh, um, even uh, so, we 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 exchanged food, well. we exchanged clothes, uh, and language too. Okay. Yeah. So like my language and Swahili and all these other languages have a few words that uh, I either borrowed from uh, most of those uh, different groups that came. How many languages do you speak? Personally, that's a tough question. Um, languages. It's weird because. There's all this debate going yeah. on around languages and dialects. Yeah. Um, so, like in Uganda, I think there's like 200 or so. Mm. 200 languages? Language dialects depends what okay. you talk to. Okay. Uh, I would say I speak about four. Mm. Fluently. Yeah. Okay. What's what's those languages? Uh, Luganda, mm. Luchiga, mm -hmm. uh, Dunyankwe. Those two are kind of. You put the accent on it, so I know it's real. <laughs> so you put, put the accent on there, so I was like, this is real for real. Yeah, so the, the, the problem, some of the languages have the same roots, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but you would still not be able to fully communicate mm -hmm. with somebody. Okay. Yeah, so I'll give an example. One of my stepmothers was from a different side of the country, mm -hmm. but not too far. Mm -hmm. She probably like maybe three hours away. Yeah. And then eventually she moved into our household. So now you had my dad's language and then her language. Mm -hmm. And then my dad had us, her, mm -hmm. his kids, and then she had her kids mm -hmm. and they came in. Yeah. And we could communicate, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like straight communication. It's more one of those where it's like, eh, eh, yeah, yeah. cup, yay, yeah. cup. <laughs> <laughs> Food, yes. <laughs> Which is weird because yeah. we're three hours apart. Yeah. And um, structurally speaking, yeah. the language looks the yeah. same. Yeah. Oh, not the same, but close. Yeah. But you could. Well, it's all, I always come as like, because even like, so I'm from Maryland and mm -hmm. I would talk to people from like New York. I'll mm -hmm. talk to people from different, like, even though New York is only four hours, mm -hmm. there is not, there's not a language barrier, but it is, like, the way we enunciate words, the way yeah. that we say certain things, it yeah. could be missed in translation. You know? Yes. Like, it's, that's just weird to me. It is, it is. Did you, did you have a problem, like, learning English? Yes, yes. Uh, English is hard to So, so I'm, I'm not going to lie. So, I, I've, I've met two types of people. Mm -hmm. There's people that move somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they, they keep their accent. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't give a shit. Yeah. And then there's people that move somewhere and they, they pick up accents. Mm -hmm. I'm in the second group. Yeah. I know this because uh, even in the city, so like going from the village to the city, yeah. my dad moved to the city way before we were born. Mm -hmm. And in, in, so in, in Uganda, it, the, the capital is Kampala. Mm -hmm. The main language in Kampala, the dominant tribe is the, the, the Baganda, mm -hmm. and they speak Luganda. Mm -hmm. I learned that language. My dad learned that language. Mm -hmm. The difference is he speaks it with the accent from the village, mm -hmm. despite having been there 20 years earlier. Mm -hmm. But me and my brothers, we picked up the language and the accent that came with it, mm -hmm. despite being new to the... It's interesting. Yeah. So some people move somewhere, and that's why you hear some of the, the immigrants. Yeah. There's different, the older immigrants here, yeah. like, they have accents. Yeah, they, they and do. the younger ones are like, yo, what's up, man? What's it's like, you don't even talk like that, fam. You don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. <laughs> Maybe like type shit, like, you don't say that, fam. You don't, you don't talk like that, fam. <laughs> but that's what it is. Yeah. So anyway, to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question is, uh, I think in my case, over, over the years, um, I just, also I was young when I moved here, 16, yeah. like yeah. you're still maturing. Yeah. Because when you're old, you're old. Yeah. You come here at 30, you're keeping that ass. <laughs> you're you you gonna, you gonna still have the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Like I just I find it funny when people have like I have a good friend. He's from um, he's from Anguilla. Mm-hmm. I've known him since I was in high school, right? Yeah. So I was saying at this time I'm knowing this man about like two two years, maybe three years. Talk regular. Yeah. Regular fam. Yeah. And he got on the phone with his cousin or somebody <laughs> and he just hit the accent on us like, fam, where the fuck did that come from? I'm like <laughs> like up on he had turned it on immediately. Like yeah. I'm like, fam, where did that come from? Like where I did that never come he, like you don't talk like that, yo. It's <laughs> so crazy. It was, it was total mind blown to me to think like, yo, like he just turned the accent on like Yeah. So fast. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's like when black people when we get to work, like oh, yeah. regularly, we, we, we got a code switch. No, I mean uh, part of it. I mean some people. Oh shit, some people uh, think that's a bad thing. Yeah, but I think it's 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 survival. Yeah, it's survival. It's like you, you talk. It, it's just like curse words. Mm-hmm. You move with your boys, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, but. When you know you're around your in-laws, your parents, yeah. stuff like that, you tone it back a little bit. Okay, that's just what this is. I don't like that. <laughs> like, well, why can't we just talk with the regular, the regular everyday voice? Like, I don't want to have to put on this like, like mask when I like go to work. I'm like, yeah. bro, like, let me just be black. Let me just, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's if we're being honest, that's the uh, the life project. Yeah. Is to mesh your lives to mm-hmm. a point where you don't have to code switch. Yeah. You know, that that's why I like uh, 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 do you watch MMA at all? I did. Yeah. I like how like most MMA fighters yeah. are vocal about their political opinions. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're like, what you gonna do? <laughs> you gonna fight? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Whereas yeah. everyone else, if you have a regular job and you have a political opinion, yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, really say too much. You yeah. can't really say it, but if you got money, you can kick everyone's ass. Yeah, you can say whatever. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, so did you did you experience like like racism when you came to Seattle? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you uh, the reason I'm hesitating is because uh, obviously racism is a big word. I would say mostly microaggressions. Mm-hmm. Is that what I, I'm not good with those terms? I, I know what you mean by microaggression. Yeah. Micro, like that's <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like there's a lot of that mm-hmm. where it's like um, I'll give you two instances. Um, one, but, uh, it's funny. This was funny, but it, it, there was a few guys I used to hang out with. Mm-hmm. Um, we played soccer together, partied together, whatever. And one time we were watching. Um, a basketball game and then he started saying something about one of the people on the field mm-hmm. looking like me or something or it was one of those words like yeah. we don't look alike or something. Yeah. and so we go back and forth back and forth and in the heat of a moment it just escalated escalated and then he was just you know he just would go back to Africa oh, I had to punch him in the face like, <laughs> oh yeah I got hit because at, at that time you know, just learning the country and how these things work, mm. and so, um, and he was a white dude, um, and he was a friend. Mm-hmm. So it was, I was like, "Where did this? Where did this come from?" Like, yeah, I thought we were cool. I thought we were like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we didn't speak for a while, um, and then it was funny because later on he messaged me and apologized. I still have the, the receipts, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was one of those kind of micro like was it like was it like shocking to you or did like how because I, I was trying to figure out like when people especially when people from Africa come here like yeah. how do you deal with like the racism that is apparently yeah. right in front of your face if people can't say it or not you know? <clears throat> yeah it's a weird one because um, again going back to that time is I'm just transitioning to this new society mm-hmm. just figuring things out yeah and so you you have I know I joke about this on stage, but it's real. It's like you will have an identity crisis because mm-hmm. you get to a point where it's like some Africans will say you're acting too American. Yeah. Some Americans will say you're not fitting in. You're not yeah. acting right. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people will um, say they don't understand what you say. Yeah. Like you literally say words and they're like, no, I, I don't get it. You speak regular English. And you're like, I just spoke what I spoke. And they're yeah. like, I don't get it. And they start sp- some speak slower to you yeah. so you go from being like oh I was a good student mm. 
uh, I was eloquent. Mm. Um, I, you see them big words, eloquent. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I had things going for me. And then you move to this culture where it's like, oh, that starts to become questionable. Mm -hmm. So when you have an incident like that, you're like, fuck, it's like, do, do I belong here? Do I yeah. belong there? Yeah. And it's like, uh, and it, you, the other layer, mm -hmm. which was personal for me, it wasn't even, I don't even know if I would put it in the race category, mm -hmm. but I hadn't seen my family in a long time. Yeah. And this motherfucker tell me, go back over there. I'm yeah. like, dude, I want to go. Yeah. I wanna, but I, yeah. I can't afford it. You know, I was working multiple jobs. I was like, dude, this idea of me just going, it's yeah. like, it doesn't work like that. I haven't gone for four years. Yeah. I haven't seen my dad. I haven't seen my... Is, it, is that is like something that like you like not seeing your family that it takes a toll on you not seeing your family like yeah because yeah. you, you suppress it mm -hmm. you see it's one of those uh you push it down mm -hmm. like the uh, the number of like birthdays mm -hmm. births graduations yeah. weddings that i've missed mm -hmm. in the last like many years yeah. is insane yeah. like you actually start to grow apart from people yeah including like even my brothers sisters like mm -hmm. The gap just gets bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it does happen, and you just kind of suppress it. Yeah. So that incident kind of brought it out mm -hmm. where I'm like, dude, don't talk to me like that. Yeah, bro, it's fucked up. Like, <laughs> you that like you want people to go back to their country? Like, like that's like the worst thing you could tell somebody. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So there was that incident. The other one that I think, uh, again, the thing I like about most of this shit is, you know. Ho thankfully over time you find a way to talk about it yeah. without the bitterness yeah uh, it was a friend of mine we we're both African we sit in a we had a late night mm -hmm. and I drop him off uh, he's dropping me off we're outside it's like 1 30 a.m. Mm -hmm. and there's two white dudes just jumping back mm -hmm. they were drunk mm -hmm. really drunk we were drunk too but there yeah. were more and they were just like bitch drive and we're like, yo, this is this ain't this ain't Uber. This ain't Uber. Yeah, and they, they wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. They're like yelling, and we're like, dude, get the fuck out. Dude. They're like, no. Yeah. And then it, it became a shouting match, yeah. Yeah. and then the neighbors come out. Yeah. And then the police show up. Of course. Um, and thankfully, it was the police didn't push it to a different direction. Yeah. Um, but it could have escalated yeah. really quickly. But all of it started with them. This. Again, these are small little things like you. I'm in my fucking car. Yeah. You think we can't just have a car and just yeah, sit yeah. in a car? Yeah. And then, of course, the neighbors, it was a white neighborhood. Yeah. They called the cops. We're like, why would you call the cops? Yeah. We don't know how this would play out. Mm -hmm. and then the cop shows up, and thankfully they were nice, yeah. but they could not have been. Yeah. Yeah. So, those two instances, I would say, were examples of stuff that mostly I experienced yeah yeah like no physical damage or anything but but even just that experience of like you coming here dealing with something because of the color of your skin yeah people think uh, people have this perception of you especially like not only being black but being African yeah people have like a certain like thing that they think about you like yeah because of what they see on TV and like things like that it's very crazy yeah, it is. It is, but we're still here. <laughs> so are you like you you think about planning moving back? Or you think, about, <laughs> you think about staying in America? Like what, what's it what's it look like for you? No, my life is here now. Yeah, um, I've been here a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started comedy. Um, my roots are here now. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough. It would be nice to go back home. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't know how. It would translate. I've been gone so long. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember I went back like three years ago. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Actually, even way back. So the first time I left, mm -hmm. I went back after like three years, and I walk the city. Mm -hmm. Back then, if I walk the city, I know everybody. I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. like Denzel and that. What's that yeah. movie? What, I <laughs> what, 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 what am I? Bro, I went back after three years. Yeah. Nobody. What? I, I don't know where everybody went. I yeah. couldn't recognize anybody. Nobody could recognize me. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if, like, whatever I wanted to do, business, anything, mm -hmm. 
my network has shrinked mm -hmm. incredibly, but the reverse is not true here. Yeah. Like I have a lot of connections here, multiple cities. Um, so I, my life is deeply rooted here mm -hmm. in every aspect of my life. So it's just easier that way. Yeah. yeah. Although I, I do want to like invest and do stuff over there. Maybe like I think people who come, you should at least go back like once a year, maybe once every other year. You know? Yeah. Just uh, it's nothing like having like that that culture experience, like especially where you're from. Like yeah. even me here, like I live in California, I'm from Maryland. Yeah. But like even just that going back home, it's yeah. like always refreshing. It is, it is. I actually, um, there's a there's a channel on YouTube called, uh, I think it's called Rat's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And there's this Jamaican, old Jamaican dude. Mm -hmm. He lives like in a village. Yeah. Like a, the image you were talking about? No, that's what, like, he lives in that place. And there's this one white kid who's a videographer or content creator mm -hmm. who somehow started a friendship with him. Mm -hmm. And that's what the YouTube channel is. Yeah. It's when he goes over there and sure. lives that life with the Ras guy. Yeah. Like when he's a Rasta? Yeah, okay. like a real Rasta. Yeah. And it's fascinating. So he shows you life as it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I was inspired. I was like, I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Like my, my actual hometown, like if, if like, I, I went back, um, I think, uh, was it two years ago? Yeah, uh, actually, it might have been uh, time flies. Yeah, yeah, but not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I went back and I shared some footage on Instagram and stuff, and people liked it. Yeah, it was like raw. Yeah, you know, you see some guy. We saw a guy with <laughs> he put a cow on yeah. a scooter. What? Yeah, he he's like, I'm not carrying. <laughs> he's like, transporting the cow, like a, a real cow. Yeah, he put it on a scooter, like in the meadow, like it was a baby. A big cow. Was it slaughtered? It was alive. Alive. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine. Seeing that. So there was a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. You see, like, uh, there's a video that people liked. That I posted. It was uh, these kids going to school mm -hmm. barefoot, and, and it, they were like seven. They, they their leader yeah. was like nine. Yeah. And there was like a, social media's eating that up. Like, <laughs> oh my God. This is where you come from. Like, it was. It was. Yeah. It's it, all I'm saying is that it's raw. Yeah. Like you get to see life in its like rawest nature. Yeah. So I'll, you know, hopefully someday I'll get to share that part of the world, That's my world, with the rest of the world. It's interesting. Yeah. You're interesting. You're an interesting person. Like, uh, even like you transition like stand up. Like I've seen you at a bunch of different shows. I'm like, okay, he has an interesting perspective on like one white people is very funny to me like your perspective on white people is, is, is really it's so dear to my heart yo it's just like he nails it he nails it on the head but just even how you like grew up like mm -hmm. is this completely different from like me as like an American growing up and, yeah yeah. So that's really dope I'm glad you're actually doing comedy fam like it's, it's a really good time hey man this is a good adventure um, it's been fun yeah. uh, it would be interesting to see where it goes um, yeah, I just seven, seven, eight years now. Yeah, yeah. So we we'll keep working on it. Be See grinding up. Where, <laughs> where can people find find you at? Ah, uh, I'm everywhere. Instagram, uh, Facebook. International comedian. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> MBD. Uh, Birunji comedy. That's B I R U N G I comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram. And my website that I need to update. <laughs> yeah, go go find him. He's a hilarious comedian. Uh, good time. You know, if you liked him on here, you'll like him in person. You'll like him. Go to a show. Uh, he's in Seattle for competition. Can people, can people vote for you? No, they okay. they have live judges. Fucking live. <laughs> they, need, they, need, they need like an online. They need like an online. We were yeah. in. Um, American Idol would have like the one line where you could like text in and like, hey, I'm voting for this person. They need something like that. Yeah, that would be dope. Um, but yeah, but uh, the, on the positive side, the, the shows are really good. Mm -hmm. They they do a good job selling them out. Yeah. Uh, so first round was a couple, but next round it's all theaters. Well, yeah. So the footage uh, we're rec uh, I'm recording. So the footage oh. uh, once I get the footage, I will add it to all my socials. I I hope that you win. 
I hope that you win. I hope, so I hope you get fucking. <laughs> I hope that you win this shit. And fucking get somewhere with this, cause it's like, yo, you're grunt, fam. And I see you out here putting in the work. You know, I, I see you working, traveling, like you're doing stuff that people like inspired to do. You know, yeah. you're hitting multiple different cities, multiple places. So, gotta keep trying. How about you? What's your timeline? I know you're leaving town. Uh, I don't really have a timeline. Kinda. No timeline. No, I do. I do things on the fly. Like I, I'm, I'm really like a because like I try to plan things out and it never works the way that I plan it out. Uh-huh. But when I'm like just relaxed and let it flow, yeah, it kind of just comes as, as it's supposed to come. Uh huh. Because I got some things I'm, I'm taking care of here. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm filming a movie right now. So I'm in a short film. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna finish up that, and I, I mean once I'm done that, it's pretty much out. You know, I kind of like go out and yeah. travel because I want to go to Chicago. Oh, okay. Um, because, like, Demetrius moved out there, so I want to go visit him. He already moved? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's he's out there, and I, I mean, I told him about some people he should hit up. And yeah. I want to go out to Chicago, because we want to do our show mm-hmm. the same way, but we want to travel with the show. Okay. So you want to yeah. take that same idea of yeah. what we've been doing and take it on the road, kind of like a Kill Tony type thing. Yeah. And kind of see where it goes, because, like, dude, we can really just grind it out, dude. You know? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So that's pretty much my, my end goal. And, then, you know, I want to... Focus more on like making content, uh huh. You know, podcasting. You know, like people. They hear the thing like, people hit me up about podcasts all the time. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, okay, they're like, y'all like your podcast, dude. Like, listen to your podcast. It's like, I don't think people are listening. So, like, <laughs> I don't think people are listening, but like people like actually listen. Like, oh, I checked out this like like your episode. People were telling me like, oh, you talked about this. I'm like, oh, you were really listening. So like, yeah. it's like that whole concept of like, okay, like. And like I recently was paid for for my podcast episode. And I was just nice. Like, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So like it kind of was like I'm in this like weird lane where I'm like okay, stand up acting podcasting. Yeah. Those are like the realms. Yeah. Because like you can even like I just did a, a voiceover. So I was on the radio. I nice. did like a voice acting thing on the radio. Dope. Yeah. So I had to sign like an NDA exclusive thing where I can't tell. I don't even know where it's gonna go. Oh, we got we got the next Morgan Freeman. <laughs> we got, look, I, 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 I didn't I didn't see people get paid bank off your voice acting. Mm-hmm. So if I can like, it's, it's like anything in this creative space is where I want to really obtain like, yeah. Whether it be like going on, you know, touring, doing stand up, whether it be just being at the crib, just <clears throat> talking into a microphone, or yeah. going to some studio to like record something. Yeah, and that's like your job. You don't have to. It's like there's so many things that I want to do. Yeah. You know, so it's like I'm using all of my creative power to just do, focus on the things that are genuinely making me happy. Yeah. And then like, it's making a content, making a content, putting it out. That's pretty much the thing that I want to do. Make content, put it out. Because I feel like it's always, you know, yeah. You can always do more, you know? That's the way to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I think all, all you need is a game plan. Yeah. Um, commit to it and then see where things go. All right. One takeaway what can you, what can you lead the people on, Bruni? What can you lead the people on? Ah, listen to your inside voice. Listen to that inner, inner voice. That's it. Biggest advice. <laughs> I like that. I like, you, you're a very positive person. <laughs> very positive, very positive person. I, I, I like that, Andrea. I appreciate you for coming. And Thank you for you, having me, man. Being here. Yeah. We're at the, the library, you know, how we do. Yeah. But anywho, you know, I've been the host, Tony Mac, as always. This is Barun G. Thank you for having me. Both go, if you're in Seattle, uh, go see him live. Very funny, very funny guy. Sounds good. All right. Later, people. Cheers. We did it. That was it.